Time for an oil change. Ram 1500, 5.7 liter, Hemi. Hello my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering Adventures. Today we're gonna do an oil change on my pickup. This is a 2014 Ram 1500 with the 5.7 liter Hemi. I'm pretty sure same basic engine from about 2009 to 2019. But uh, double check, this engine takes 5W20 oil, and I purchased a Wix filter today. This is the one I got here, 57060. Um, go ahead and check. Use whatever oil and whatever filter that you prefer. I'm using Mobile One, fully synthetic. Just use what the manufacturer recommends, and you're going to be fine. I don't really want to get into oil and oil filters because that's just about as bad as religion and politics. We all have our choices, we use them, and of course we're right and you were wrong. So let's get at it. Okay here we are underneath the truck. Nice thing about a pickup is you don't have to lift it too much. I just drove up on some uh, blocks. Got a couple inches of clearance. This is a, let me double check, 13 millimeter drain plug. And it's on here pretty tight because it was changed by the dealership last time, so they probably put it on with an impact. Don't do that. Put down lots of cardboard, have a large drain pan, and we'll get that out and get this oil draining. Now, I wasn't joking when I said that thing was on there tight. Um, when you install these, you don't need to torque it down to 100 foot pounds, and don't use an impact wrench. So here you go, get your fingers dirty, the last couple threads, there you go, if you're quick about it, you'll just get two fingers dirty. So coming in underneath the front of the truck, passenger side, the oil filter is a giant pain to get to, it's right there, so if you got a four wheel drive, there's your passenger side axle. Here's your steering. So you got to get up in there and get that thing out. You can see it right there as well. Maybe you can see it from the front. Let's see. I can't even see the camera. There it is. So it's a pain in the butt. I'm not going to be able to uh, shoot video and get it out at the same time. But there you have it. So best of luck. It's going to make a mess. Have rags ready, have your drain pan, have cardboard. All right, I kind of feel like a little bit of a genius here. Not often that I feel smart. But I was looking at how that thing was in there and where all that oil was going to go. And I knew it was going to make a heck of a mess. So I had this old uh, oil jug or whatever this might be. Maybe it's a antifreeze jug, but anyway. I've had this around for a little while. I probably made it for something. Cut it down into a little drain pan. Well, that fit perfectly up in that little space up there. And you could still pull the filter off. I put a rag down underneath it. The rag's still up in there. So I had the rag laying across all the items up there. This sitting on top of it. Spin the filter off, dropped into there. Then all the oil ran out of the, the filter housing. See how much oil you'd get everywhere up there. So, if you can, make something like this. I've, I've also in the past used um, like little uh, aluminum cooking dishes, stuff like that. You know, the little ones that you can get for making like a meatloaf or whatever in. Those work great as well. Anyway, we got that off. If you're going to use the Mopar filter, I guess that's the number right there. And like I said, you can look up all the filters, whatever kind you like to use. Always make sure that the rubber gasket comes off with this filter. I have seen it twice in my lifetime where that has stuck onto the filter housing. You go to screw your filter on, start your car up if you don't look. Oil's gonna be flying out of there. You'll make it down the driveway, up the street, and then blow up your engine. Fortunately, I caught it both times. Before you go crawling around underneath the vehicle, make sure your filter's the same. 
looks like we're good. You can put a little bit of fresh oil on the gasket to make sure it doesn't stick. You can put some oil in there. If it's oriented correctly where you can get it in, this one sits straight up and down, so I'm going to put a little bit in there. Um, I try not, I like to fill them all the way up, but the way that this one has to go in, I have to angle and get it in. If I fill it all the way up, it's just going to make a mess, so I'm going to put some in there. It's always good if you can do that. Okay, this engine holds seven quarts, so you're going to have to buy at least one of these big jugs. This is a five quart. Sometimes they sell them in four. And then I just bought a whole nother five quart one. It's cheaper by the quart, you know, and I'll be buying a, another oil change kit at some point anyway. You can buy individuals if you'd like. So what I usually do is I pour the whole thing in and then I use the empty one to measure out the two quarts because they're marked on the side. So I'm just going to pour two out of the other five into this one. Then I'll have three remaining. I'll buy another five quart and I'll have a spare quart and so on and so forth over the years. As I do oil changes, everything will eventually work out. Yeah, there's our markings. So I'll just pour two quarts into here and then pour this one right in. I'll probably pour uh, a quart and a half in even though I know it holds seven. Then I can start it, let it sit for a minute and check it. So we're going to start it up. You can watch your oil pressure. It should raise pretty quickly. Watch your gauge. There you go. Jumped right up. And then the next thing you want to do is look underneath to make sure you don't have any leaks. Because if you got oil leaking out, you're going to kill your engine. We got the notorious hemi tick going on there, which is a exhaust manifold gasket. All right, so far so good. Everything looks good. We're going to shut her down and we're going to check the oil in just a second. But I want to also show how to reset that oil change minder. There it is, change oil soon. So we're going to go through the menu here. Do that right here. Let's see, gauge summary. I think that's our messages there. Get that one there, I believe, is the one we need, actually, vehicle info. Oil life. Okay. And you can see it says hold arrow to reset. So we're going to hold that arrow. Confirm reset. Okay. All right, 100%. It said it was 7,500 miles since last oil change. Now you can change your oil whenever you'd like. A lot of people are still on the old 3,000 mile oil change and I do not think that that is necessary, but if you'd like to change it that often, feel free. With synthetic oil, 7,000 is actually probably gonna be great, but y'all do your own, I'll do mine, and we're gonna be happy. I took it off the blocks, got it on level ground. We'll check the oil and then this job is done. It looks pretty good. Yep. Right in there, I actually put all of it in, seven quarts. Two other points for an oil change here that I'm going to add. Make sure you recycle your oil and your filter. And then, I like to keep records. So, I got myself a log book. I've got all my vehicles in here. And this vehicle, I also like to write down the drain plug, what type of oil, and what filter. That way when it comes time to do an oil, filter, uh, oil change again, I just look right here. And when I run to the store, I know I need to get that. Ooh, I gotta put how many quarts. That way I know how many quarts to get. And then I'll write down the date, the miles, and the procedure. Then I have a nice record. So we bought a Honda Pilot, brand new. Um, 
Jesus was about 13, 14 years ago, and I maintained the thing myself entirely the whole time. Put all this down. When it came time to change it, the gentleman who purchased it took it to a shop, and they saw all these records. They loved it. I got full asking price. But this is really more for me than for the next owner. But do it however you like. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup, and then the job is complete. Changing your oil, oil yourself. Well, it can be a pain in the butt. You saw, it's not always great. This vehicle, not awesome, not terrible. I've done many worse, so, you know, it is what it is. I like to do my own oil changes. That way I know they're done right. Well, at least as right as I have done them. Uh, you know, take that drain plug, for example. That thing was way too tight. Now, the oil filter wasn't, so who knows? <laughs> yeah, the dealership, you never know what you're going to get there. All right. Well, if you're liking my videos, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and if you are not already a subscriber, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.